Bacterial leaf streak has appeared again in the state. Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson-Zims says diagnosticians verified the disease in a sample from a south-central Nebraska county. The disease was first confirmed in the U.S. last season. Previously, it had been found on corn in South Africa. Tamara joined us Tuesday to describe what growers should be looking for when scouting for bacterial leaf streak and explain how researchers are working to find management options for the disease. Well, it's mid-June and right on time. Like the last two years, bacterial leaf streak has developed in Nebraska, and we've so far confirmed it in one corn sample from Adams County earlier this week. I, I think it's likely that we'll probably see more samples coming through and that people will start seeing it in their fields too, like we have in the past. Why do you say that? Why do you say it's likely? Well, this bacterium does seem to overwinter very well in Nebraska and especially in the residue. And so where people have had it before in some of those fields and counties, I think it's likely we're gonna see it again. Tell me what they should look for in those fields. And so the things that I would tell people to watch for are those long, narrow streaks or stripes between the veins on those lowest corn leaves. What was unique this year is that we found it in a four leaf or V4 corn leaf. That is the earliest that we found it in the field yet. But it's, it's not a big surprise for us because in our greenhouse testing over winter, we were able to see it at all corn stages. And so it's, it's likely to be out there. What is its prominence in the field? I mean, it, these are small lesions it looks like on this leaf that are hard to detect if you're not looking very closely. You probably do have to look close. And, and it's most important to me that people understand what this looks like and that it looks very similar to other common things like gray leaf spot. This is not gray leaf spot yet. Gray leaf spot has a much more rectangular leaf with much more straight edges. These have wavy edges on them that'll make it a little bit easier to diagnose at least early on. Are there any management options that we know of? At this point, we are testing quite a few products, uh, rescue type treatments. Uh, we don't have data yet to support the use of these products. If uh, anyone wants to try something, especially maybe on higher value corn like popcorn, we'd be happy to work with people on it. And there may be a few options, uh, bactericides or uh, some of the disinfestants, but we don't have data on it just yet. Many of those are gonna be washed off quickly. And so that's something to be aware of before making an application. At this stage in the growing season, do we know anything about how it impacts the plant or potential yield? There's no research in, in short. We don't have good research on that yet. We have a lot of ongoing research, but it's too early yet. In general, I would say that's gonna depend on how much leaf area is affected, much like what you would see with gray leaf spot. And since there are some uh, differences between hybrids, uh, that's gonna determine how severe it becomes and weather conditions. You had talked about where it overwinters. Have we learned more about what it's overwintering in and any other hosts that it could be potentially infesting? We had a lot of research over the winter in the greenhouse. Our lab was very busy, our students very busy. And in the greenhouse testing, it appears that there are at least several species that we know of that look to be susceptible. And some of those we should be paying attention to. For instance, uh, some of our foxtail species are susceptible uh, based on greenhouse test. In addition, we know that oats and oats develop disease in the greenhouse. It's unclear if that's gonna be uh, the case in the field. We are doing that testing now. But uh, that's something to watch for in some of our cover crops as well as some of our native grasses like little blue stem, big blue stem, and some others. Can you explain the research that you're doing? Sure. Uh, you know, in the greenhouse, plants grow differently. Their cuticles aren't as thick, and so it's not completely representative of what goes on in the field. But it is the first way that we can get some preliminary data, and so those are the ones that we were most suspicious of. And those are how we narrow down our list from 40 down to about 10 so we can do advanced testing in the field. And so we're gonna do that now, but uh, those are species I would be watching. And uh, they could b build up the inoculum, so we'll see more disease later. And so uh, that's, that's one trial we did in the greenhouse. Otherwise, we know that long extended periods of very high humidity also promoted more disease development. And so, uh, but that's not to say that even at lower humidity, we saw some disease development. But if we have extended periods where we've had a lot of rain, we're likely to see more of it. <music>